This tutorial was created with Sony Vegas users in mind, but it can be used with other video editors as well. In exploring the best ways to render video from Vegas for upload to YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, as well as playback on your own computer, we came up with three methods which we call good, better and best for the sake of simplicity. Briefly, the good method does all its work inside Vegas and produces satisfactory and in many cases excellent results for YouTube. The advantages of the good method are that it's relatively quick, simple and works without external encoders. It works best with video that was shot in 1280 by 720 progressive format, 720p, and does not require resizing or deinterlacing before uploading to YouTube. More about this in a minute. The better method was developed to give sharper quality and better motion detail to the uploaded video than can be accomplished within Vegas. It uses an external free encoder called Handbrake to produce the finished product. The advantages over the good method are better deinterlacing using a method that is based on Yadif, and better resizing using a tool called Lankzoz. Video people have weird names for their tools. It's the method to use when you're starting with 1080i interlaced footage that many HD cameras shoot, and also where there's lots of movement in your footage. It takes about the same time as doing all the work in Vegas, but involves an extra step. The best method was developed by Nick from BubbleVision.com. His underwater video on YouTube is fabulous, and uses a command line script to feed the video live from Vegas to external processors and encoders. His method uses advanced deinterlacing tools that are better than others in preserving detail in motion. Nick's tutorial is an education in itself and is recommended reading for power users and commercial production houses. The full tutorial for Nick's method can be found here. This tutorial will give a brief description of the good method that those already using Vegas should readily understand, but will concentrate on the better method, which is efficient and produces an excellent quality product in almost every circumstance. OK, here are the custom settings for using the good method in Vegas Movie Studio 10, as well as all recent versions of Vegas Pro. In Project Properties, match your media settings using the icon, and be sure to set render quality to best, and select a deinterlace method if you'll be resizing. We'll use the main concept AVC encoder to produce an MP4 file. These settings are about optimal for YouTube when you're rendering directly out of Vegas. Now we introduce the better method, which is the main focus of this tutorial. In doing research for this tutorial, we arrived at a number of basic assumptions. Although these are not etched in stone, they will work for most average home PCs and connections. They'll probably change over time as the available tools evolve and services like YouTube and Vimeo continue to develop their delivery capabilities. On to the ingredients. To prepare your video you will need Vegas Pro 7, 8, 9 or 10 or Vegas Movie Studio 10 or newer and we suggest a relatively fast PC and a good internet connection, preferably 4 megabits per second or faster. The Avid 2.3.4 LE codec package, which is free from this address. The Handbrake encoder, version 0.9.5 or newer, which can be downloaded for free here. Install the Avid codex and Handbrake encoder on your PC. We'll show you how to use them later on. We're starting with an HD 1920x1080 29.97i project in Vegas. This is common to much of the AVC HD footage shot in North America, NTSC. HDV 1080i can also be imported into this project without any alterations. If you're starting with 25i or 24p source footage, you'll have to set your project and render properties accordingly. Now that we're satisfied with the way our project looks, we need to adjust the video levels for our final playback, whether it will be on YouTube, Vimeo or our home computer. Understanding that most of you probably own Vegas Movie Studio or are a casual user, we're not going to get into a discussion of colour balance, levelling using video scopes or colour space issues. They're beyond the scope of this step-by-step -step method. 
we're going to give you a simple method to ensure that what you see on playback is the same as your source footage or in the Vegas preview window, assuming that's how you want your finished video to look on YouTube or in your favourite player. All the players we tested, including YouTube and Vimeo, as well as PC-based players such as VLC, do what is called a levels expansion. This means that if you do not correct the levels in Vegas first, the highlight and shadow detail will be lost, and the video will have more contrast than you started with. Fortunately, this is easy to correct with a Levels plugin in Vegas. Click the Effects button on the preview window, or on the events you wish to normalise. From the list, choose the Levels plugin, then Add, and OK. From the list, choose the Computer RGB to Studio RGB preset. It is now OK to close the plugin window. Be sure that the Split Screen button on the video preview is not selected otherwise you won't see the effect any video plugins are having. You'll notice that the preview window is now greyer than before. This is OK. Now we're going to render an intermediate file in Vegas to export to Handbrake. This is where Avid DNX HD comes in. Go to File, Render As, and select the QuickTime file type. Click the Custom tab. Make sure the rendering quality is set to Best then click the Video tab. The uncompressed template should have been selected for you, and we'll use that as our starting point. If our project properties are set correctly, then the only thing we need to do now is to click the Video Format tab and select the Avid DNX HD codec. Click the Configure tab, make sure 709 is selected, this is important, and scroll down and select the 1080i 145 8-bit template. This is important because Handbrake will not accept 10-bit or TR files. Then click OK, OK, and render as you normally would in Vegas. Now open the Handbrake application. We're using version 0.9.5 for our example. But before we render, let's create a custom preset for our YouTube videos. Using the normal preset as our starting point, go to Tools, then Options, and uncheck the box that says Always Use iPod iTunes Extension, which is .m4v for MP4. Now let's open our DNxHD file from Vegas so the custom picture controls are exposed. Next, on the Picture tab, check Web Optimized. Set the size to 1280 by 720 and Custom Cropping Options to 0. Go to the Video Filters tab and set Decomb to Default. On the Video tab, select H264 as your codec, and the frame rate the same numeric value as your project. Don't use Same as Source. Select Constant Quality, and set the slider to RF19. On the Audio tab, I like to set the bitrate at 320 for best playback on my PC. Other settings should be left at their defaults for YouTube. On the Advanced tab, we're going to make a few changes. Make sure your settings look exactly like this before going on. This takes out some stuff that's unnecessary for YouTube and allows our encoded file to be opened again in Vegas if necessary. Now let's save our preset. Click Add, name your preset, such as Vegas to YouTube, and check Use Picture Filters and select Source Maximum. Click Add, and you can save it as your default preset if you wish. Be sure Web Optimized is still selected and click Start. When finished, rename your video if you wish and finally upload to YouTube. If after uploading your video to YouTube or playing back on your PC player you notice that your blacks have a greyish look to them, you can set the output Start in our Levels filter to 0, leaving the output End set at 0.922 and save this as a new preset if you wish. Some camcorders need this slight additional adjustment, and some do not. If you're rendering for your own website, we recommend the following changes to your Handbrake preset. On the Advanced tab, set the parameters exactly as shown. On the Video tab, select Average Bitrate and type in 2000. A two-pass render will give the best quality at this bitrate. This will optimise local or site playback much in the way that Vimeo does. If you get playback stutter on your computer, 
setting the average bitrate to 1500 is acceptable. That's about it. Sit back and enjoy the result of your efforts, and feel free to join in the many discussions on the Sony Vegas forums. The Vimeo version is here if you would like to compare. Thank you, and good night.